Hey folks, how you guys doing? Hope you all had a great Tuesday morning so far and you know, I hope you had a good weekend as well. This past weekend was just really nice and relaxing with my wife and we went out and did a bunch of stuff and uh, just spent some time together. It was, it was really nice, something we haven't done in a while. Uh, but hopefully you are all on the same page as well with that. Uh, the past week's video, last week's video was a collaboration with Tyler G. We started a flag display case while I was up there in Michigan and he had a pretty good plan on how to, to get this thing accomplished and was able to finish it up without me uh, once I left. And man, the finished project looks absolutely great. If you haven't already seen it, I'll post a link in the description below. Be sure to check that out. Um, let, let's see, I've got my, got my notes uh, uh, clipped onto a, a tripod here. I haven't done this before, but it's sitting right, ne right next to the camera and uh, pretty handy. Uh, so, Last week's vlog video was a follow-up on the shooting board, and I made a stupid mistake. Uh, when I was saying that you can use a block plane with a shooting board, I just grabbed my block plane for demonstration because you can use a block plane on a shooting board, and you can absolutely do that. I failed to take into consideration that my block plane is a rabbiting plane. I know you're not supposed to use a rabbiting, block, rabbiting plane of any kind or a shoulder plane on a shooting board because it will chew up that uh, 90 degree surface that the plane rides up against. However, my mind was on cruise control and I was just thinking, grab a block plane, you can use a block plane. And I think in the video I actually mentioned that, oh yeah, my blade's set to one side so it's not going to chew away the bottom floor that this rides up against. Um, I wasn't taking into consideration that there is no material to the side of the blade and you should never use one of these on a shooting board because it's just going to chew it up. Uh, my mind was on cruise control and wasn't really thinking about everything that was going on with that situation. So yes, you can use a block plane. No, you can't use a rabbiting block plane. Uh, I, I, once I read the first comment about somebody pointing that out, I was like, oh, yeah, of course you can't. I knew that. I'm an idiot. Why did I show it? Anyway, it is what it is. Um, let's see, what else? I've had one video finally break a million views here on YouTube, which is pretty cool. Kind of, sort of. Um, YouTube income is obviously based largely on views, so that that's nice, uh, but at the same time, it's who cares if a video breaks a million views? It doesn't really matter too much. Uh, now, there's my approach to making videos has always been to make what I want to make primarily um, and with a little bit of emphasis on what performs and what doesn't. But at the same time, I'm not trying to hit a viral video or anything. That'd be great if it happened, but my, my content is structured in a way to where it's more, I guess, consistency and conservativeness as far as woodworking goes rather than something that might be a little bit more out there and a little bit more the, the wow factor for viral videos. So viral, viral videos are never a, an objective for me, uh, but to see one video break a million views was pretty cool. But the irony behind that is that the video that broke one million views on a 99.9% .9 woodworking channel is the only video that is a metalworking video. It's when I made my metal vise with welding and such. Um, <laughs> so there's a little bit of irony there, uh, but that was pretty cool. Uh, if you haven't seen that video, then I'll post a link to, in the, link to it in the description below. And then also last week I mentioned my pantry. Uh, I'm doing that this week, but there's, uh, I'm, I'm, at, I'm at a fork in the road. I may take one path or the other, depending on how uh, my conversation goes with my wife tonight. This is Monday when I'm recording this and when she gets off work I'm going to explain the two routes that I want to take uh, with the pantry and th the way my my house is laid out the living room dining room and kitchen are, are all in one long open floor plan and the pantry is actually in the dining room slash hallway going to the master bedroom so it's not really in the kitchen, which doesn't really make much sense to be used as a pantry. So my initial thought was whoever built the house used that as a hall closet. And the second, we're the third owners of this house. The second owner converted it to a pantry and that's how we perceived it as a pantry since we've lived here. So it kind of doesn't make sense to use as a pantry. 
and we have plenty enough space in the kitchen to put all the food into the kitchen cabinets. So long as that they're organized properly and I come up with a couple of organizational solutions that I think I have, and then it would make much more sense to pull some of the items in the kitchen that are used very infrequently, such as a desktop uh, oven or countertop oven for uh, baking small stuff. Like it doesn't really make sense to heat an entire oven for like one or two biscuits when you can do it in a much smaller oven and like a toaster, you know, small countertop appliances that aren't used frequently, but are still used. Those could be put into the pantry, closet, whatever you want to call it, as well as finding, finally, finding a good home for my vacuum and mop and, and broom and stuff like that. So I think I'm going to convert the pantry back into a hall closet, and then that'll be a, an organizational solution in there, as well as getting all the food into the cabinets and having some type of a couple different organization things with cans and then some like pull out trays and such. So if my wife vetoes that decision uh, tonight, then it'll just be organizing the pantry for food. Uh, but I'm definitely doing that this week. I need to get that done. Um, but what else? Uh, also completely random thinking. This is the end of the year. So I or getting close to the end of the year. So I uh, typically dig back into statistics over the year and just see if I can't gain any type of knowledge based upon those statistics. And if you are interested in making YouTube videos uh, for two different reasons, number one, you just want to share some stuff, then forget about everything as far as what works better and what you're supposed to do and all this crap, just share your stuff. But if you have any interest in growing your channel, um, something that I was always told from multiple sources and, and just general knowledge is that YouTube is short content. So six to nine minutes is kind of like the ballpark where you should hit with your videos. And for the first couple of years, that's what I tried to do. And then in the beginning of 2016, I was like, no, that, that's, that's kind of crappy. If I want to make a video longer, then I'll try and make a video longer. And looking back on the statistics, uh, the past, all of 2016, the top 10 videos as far as views go, uh, three of the top 10 are longer than 16 minutes for me. So longer platforms really do, or longer videos do work so long as you can keep engagement, you can make them interesting. Um, and my second most viewed video in all of 2016 was 21 minutes and 40 seconds long. So that kind of breaks that myth. The main thing is not to shoot for a time frame if you want to grow a channel and such, just shoot for making something interesting. If something's interesting, people are going to watch longer regardless. So, and that's the thing, you know, what I find interesting, you may not, what you find interesting, I may not, or the next guy. So it's, it's kind of a continuous evolving process, but I figured I'd throw that out there, some statistics on that. And then also YouTube has changed their algorithms several times. And as far as how videos are recommended and ranked and all that, all that thing, uh, all of the, you know what I'm saying? And I was also looking at my watch time statistics and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of the top eight videos on my watch time list. Uh, six of them are longer than 15 minutes. So obviously if it's a longer video, then they're going to watch a little bit longer apples to apples comparison, but that they're according to YouTube's algorithms and such should perform better long term. So mainly just forget about uh, the shooting for a specific time. If you want to upload videos, just try your best to make things interesting, regardless of how long it takes. Kind of think that was a little bit of a out of left field rant there, but uh, Anyway, that's it. You guys take care. Have a great day and I'll talk to you next week.